Okay, everybody, we are out here for the third episode of the Mapping Whitetail series with Onyx. The last one, Zach and I were at the computer and we were talking about access routes and hunting pressure. Today, we're gonna come back in and we're gonna go into these public areas that we looked at on the map mm -hmm. and we're gonna check and see if some of our guesses were right. This is one of those spots, if you remember, that little access trail leads into the creek down there. Mm -hmm. We want to go in there first thing and check and see if that creek is even crossable. Yeah, I think something like a body of water is just going to deter people from coming in here. It may completely block off one whole side of this piece of public land. Just got to go get our boots on the ground and go check it out. This road that we're walking on right now to get down here to the creek is one of them we were talking about on the last episode. We couldn't really tell from the map if this thing was even drivable and there's actually a gate up back there at the car supposed to keep people out of here and it looks like there hasn't been too many folks driving back in here i mean i'm assuming the dnr is what's been using this road we're already coming up on a cornfield and we're still several hundred yards away from that river crossing it doesn't look like there's any vehicle access allowed right here so that's definitely a plus it's actually right up here in the inside of this field Here's the creek. Uh, it's kind of sweet down there actually, but definitely crossable. Well, here's something that we didn't know from the map is that this was so steep. Yeah. Pretty sure I can see boot tracks in the sand down there though. Whew. Made it. <laughs> we made it down here to the creek. And this isn't exactly what we were hoping for from a hunting perspective, but that's why we preach coming out here and checking all these spots out. You know, Zach and I picked four or five different locations on the last episode. Like I mentioned, today we're just coming in here and just trying to eliminate spots that are easy to access, and this is definitely one of them. We were kind of hoping this creek would be deep and hard to cross where we had to use waders or something, but obviously it's not difficult and the people are here. I mean, mm -hmm. there's boot tracks all over the place down here along the edge of this thing. What'd you find? A barefoot track over yeah, there? Yeah, there's there like go. a little kid's like barefoot track from like playing in the creek so there's all kinds of different people down here yeah and we found a bunch of empty shotgun shells on the way in you know empty cans and stuff which isn't a surprise given it's fairly close to the road we were just hoping this creek was going to deter some access but we're talking about an area in this situation too that we're not going to hunt a whole bunch this would be an area that you know we're looking at it from the perspective i guess of hunting it for a short period of time if we lived here and this was closer you know, right out our back door, we could keep an eye on this creek. And if the levels really go up and it changes the access, then this might be an area that we start targeting on. Yeah, you need to check every creek like this, you know, because from a map, you just, you have no idea whether it's, you know, rock bottom or if it's mud bottom. And I mean, if this is mud and sand and it's two feet deep, it still is probably going to be kind of difficult to cross in spots. But with all these little rock bars and riffles and stuff, it makes it very easy to get from one side to the other when the river's at its average level right now. Sometimes when you're looking at an aerial photo too, you're looking at an image of the river when it's at its you know, highest point. Yeah, Sometimes, it just depends on when that photo was taken. Right, if the photo is taken now, you may be able to tell, hey, you know, we're probably gonna be able to cross this creek, but the photo was taken in you know, early spring when the water levels are way up, it's gonna be a totally different thing. So gotta def check them. definitely get out and check them. It's gonna make a big difference later on. Leave the woods better than you found it. Might have picked one of the more heavily pressured areas. We use that road to make our way all the way around this center chunk to get up here on top. And uh, as you can tell, this is a full blown tractor path. I mean, there's a tractor down there in that bottom right now. I'm sure that he's bringing round bales out of there because he's got bale forks on the front of it. This is 
going to lead to very easy access mm -hmm. on this piece. And that's kind of what we anticipated when we were looking at the map on the last episode. Just driving around here this morning and actually getting our eyeballs on the place mm -hmm. looks like that there's tons of access opportunities for people to come in here. It's not very hard to get to 90% of this whole center right. chunk. And I think the other thing too, once you're here, you can actually see what the access is like outside of the access points. You know, if you're able in your state to park on the road and go into a piece of public land, it's important to look at that as well. You know, if the woods is really thick, hard to get through, you know, maybe it's wet, or like we looked at earlier, a creek, anything that's gonna deter people, that's gonna be important. But with this piece, it's just pretty accessible all the way around it. So at least what we've seen so far, which is most of this piece. Yeah, and what we discussed last time was that we were kind of looking at this pond there mm -hmm. along that landlocked fence line yep. and a lot of that thick cover down in the southwest corner. But, I mean, that's a seven, 800 acre chunk of land right here with roads surrounding it and pretty much access on three sides. Mm -hmm. By coming out here this morning, before we've even really pushed into the center of this particular property, we've eliminated 90% of it. I mean, there's one little back corner that I would say interests us, wouldn't mm -hmm. you agree? Yeah, I would say that if there was gonna be a place in this piece that we would go directly towards, it's that one. That's without knowing any of the pressure that's actually here during hunting season. You know, granted, it's really easy to access, but if nobody's here hunting, you know, maybe closer to the road is better. But, you know, again, we're talking about like a limited time schedule. We're not talking about hunting a whole season. When you got limited time, it's nice to narrow these areas down so that way you can go to what you would expect is the best spot. We're gonna mark that. That's definitely an area of interest. And we're gonna head down the road to the lake now and check out some of that. Oh, nice, I like this. We thought all along while we were doing our map scouting that this was a bridge. Apparently the bridge is out. Sure as dang, dang, dang heck isn't. There's a white tail There's a bear right there. See it, Greg? Quiet, stay quiet. There's a little buck right there in front of me. Oh, here she comes. We're going to get him. There's our bridge that's no longer a bridge. Aha. Uh -huh. Interesting. Timber down there, you got an old telephone wire. You don't know what type of map is going to be sitting on that telephone. That is right there, yes. I don't see any like parking access to go that direction other than just this dead end road here. Bunch of cattails and nasty marsh type cover right past all those lily pads. We marked off a bunch of these areas, excluded them off the map when we were doing our scouting. And now that we're here, we've actually realized that this is just a dead end road. This is not actually a bridge. And from the map, it looks like one. You can walk across it, but it looks like there's been a few people down here, but it's rained since somebody's been down this far. There's no actual parking area or anything like that in here. Yeah, I mean, the end of the road just looks like another driveway where it splits off up there. That's why you gotta come out here and you gotta look at this stuff. You know, because our initial guess was definitely wrong on this area. We figured that there would be tons of parking access, boat ramp access right here. There's no boat ramp of any sort. There's no real parking access other than just off the side of this minimum maintenance road and it's really thick. The very thin strip of land that you do have off the edge of the lake that's public is very, very thick and probably hard to get through. So kayak access right here where we just put in right off the side of this road would probably be best. I think people are still gonna park here. You know, obviously this is still public access, but it's not like your traditional parking lot or pull in like we were at earlier where there's a pull in and then there's a path leading into the public here. It's just the dead end road and there's no paths going into the piece of actual public land. So it's just a less likely place for people to just park and walk in. We saw a lot of sign, people sign over at that other location mm -hmm. too. And initially there's not a ton right here. I mean, there's probably some people that are coming out here parking and fishing. Very few I would anticipate are getting out walking back up that road and then going way up in there into public. The strip there of land is not very wide, mm -hmm. but when we looked at the map, it looks really, really thick, and it is. I mean, it's super thick. Well, and that's just another thing. You know, a lot of people probably aren't parking here and going north, and to the north is one of the areas that we liked. We just figured, you know, if this was a through road, that people would be parking here way more often. You know, right as we were coming in, there's deer on the road, 
there's grass growing in the middle of the road and right when we see something like that it's it's definitely catching our interest way more than you know your traditional pull in or parking lot or you know whatever standard for the piece of public land that you're on yeah even if people are even if people are hunting in here the traffic through here period mm -hmm. like the vehicle traffic is nothing anywhere close to what we anticipated because there's no bridge right I and mean, we thought that was going to be a bridge and with legit boat ramps and parking areas and everything and it is nothing like that there's no actual boat ramp here you know if you're going to access into this water you're just going to have to portage your canoe or your kayak in mm -hmm. and go from there do you guys remember when i said i hit that bird <laughs> Well, that's not good. <laughs> Dang it. Well, oh, dude. That's sad. Eater, eater, or one that dive bombs. Now, Ted, don't you go on. in that water without your life jacket. <laughs> Be careful, Ted. This says it's the park, but I don't know if it's public or not. Well, that old boy, I guess he's got a boat in there. Let's have a quick gander, shall we? Well, we're at our last spot of the day here. This is that little parking area. It was actually one of the first areas that caught our eye when we were looking at the map, just because it's kind of an off the wall piece. It's not, you know, one of those main accesses like we were talking about a little bit ago. Yeah, and there is a gate down there. There's obviously been some people pulling into it, but the gate is locked mm -hmm. and you can't drive any further than this point. And it's real thick back up in there. I mean, there's, it's got potential mm -hmm. for some decent hunting on the oh, back side yeah. of that big cove down through that bottom. I feel like now that we've driven around it and we've got familiar with a lot of these access points, we can start to make some better judgments on where the lowest amount of hunting pressure is going to occur. I think just getting a perspective of how big the piece is, you know, you can measure stuff on a map, but until you're really there, you it's just, hard to tell a lot about it. Yeah, I mean, on, and some of our guesses, as you all have seen in this video, have been correct. Some of them have not been. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we were saying when we were doing the scouting back on the computer in episode two. This is why it's so important to get out here and start scouting access this time of year, well before hunting season starts. Familiarize yourself with these areas, the roads in and out of them, because, you know, if you come in here in the dark, for example, in early November in the rut, having never been here before, you're gonna be fighting an uphill battle mm -hmm. trying to find a good place to hunt. You gotta learn as much as you can about these areas and this is one of the first steps in making good decisions as we get closer to deer season. So we're gonna head back to the house, get back on the computer, start to get into more detail about how we pick the, the areas of focus when it comes mm -hmm. to hunting and scouting. In the fifth video, we'll come back out here again and we'll do some boots on the ground scouting, actually find some potential tree stand locations to kind of tie a bow around everything. And as you can tell, we've been on our phones this entire time using the Onyx app. If you all want to check it out, you can save 20%. Just go to onyxmaps.com and use our promo code. It's THP in all caps. It'll save you 20% off all their app products. We use them all the time, just like we did today. Next time, we'll be on the maps trying to pick some spots to go hunt. Yep. Yep.